WWE Raw and Netflix going TVMA, good idea or bad idea? Gunther versus Goldberg, good idea or bad idea? Brawl for All, good idea or bad idea? Learn the answers to these and more on this episode of WrestleJuice's Pro Wrestling, good idea, bad idea. What's up, Rendo? Steve here. Welcome back to the show. So let's talk about Raw on Netflix because the very first good idea, bad idea is presented by Lyric AI Love who says, explicit language when Netflix moves to Raw, good idea or bad idea? Of course, it's a show where I take your suggestions for possibly controversial wrestling topics, and I let you guys know whether I think it's a good idea or a bad idea. So let's talk about Raw on Netflix. Anything goes there. Kind of like the Wild West. There's not going to be any of these, uh, you know, network censors, standards and practices crowds being censored unless WWE says so. I'm sure Netflix for $5 billion will also have plenty of say on the matter, but it seems like WWE is probably going to have some amount of leeway when it comes to how they're going to handle it. I get the feeling that internally they're probably not too happy with, for example, entire blocks of like half minute long segments of SmackDown being completely silenced out because of an overzealous standards and practice censorship person, whoever's got their hand on the button or whatever it is. So in case WWE wants to know how to handle Raw on Netflix, I think I've got some good guidelines here. And essentially, essentially, with a little bit of exception here and there, I think I'm going to stick to like the PG-13 movie rating system here where you can say shit plenty but you can only say fuck once as long as it's not a sexualized version of fuck for example i can say hey fuck you but i can't say i am going to fuck you get it yeah so i think they should do that so i got a whole list of things right here i'm just gonna read them so they already do blood maybe more of that i think more blood one shit per hour. Not actual defecation. That should not be allowed. Just the word shit. Like people saying, you shit, or I, not I need to shit. Again, you don't want to put that on camera. But you can say, hey, you know, stop giving me shit. Stuff like, stuff like that. Asshole should be fine. You can also adhere to the NYPD blue rule book. Where like sometimes they'd show male ass. Which actually I think that they should be allowed to show male butt cheeks. For comedy's sake. And that's pretty much it. And you don't really need to see them getting out of the shower. That's a bit exploitive. And given that WWE already has a lawsuit against them, pretty heavy one at that. Probably want to stay away from sexualized material anyways, unless it's sort of inferred. Uh, definitely no censoring the crowd, obviously, unless they're like yelling racial or homophobic slurs or something like that. That's, that's horrible. American crowds generally don't do that anyway. So yeah, no censoring the crowd unless it's like something horrible, but if they're saying, shut the fuck up, let them chant that it doesn't matter. Uh, let's see here. Obviously damn and hell are okay. Uh, what did I say here? No explicit sex, no female nipples, no hog, no buttholes, male bear cheeks are, are fine. Probably no guns. If you want to go down that old Brian Pillman segment route, which I, they probably don't want to do, you know, they got the Motor City machine guns and they got the machine gun fire sound effect at the beginning. But this country kind of has a problem with gun violence. It's, at some point, there's going to be another big, you know, and then they've got that going on. So you probably want to stay away from guns. Enough problems in the country with guns. And the, but you can maybe do stabbings. Maybe you could do stabbings. I think stabbings would be OK. Here's the deal. Here's the deal with all this. I understand that they want their product to be to a degree family friendly, but here's the crazy thing. I am a family man. I am a father. I've got a bunch of older stepkids and then I've got one of my own and she's nine years old. And here's the thing that I realized talking to virtually every parent of my child's friends, we're all kind of in the same boat. We're pretty loose with what we'll let our children watch. My rule in this household is basically like no like overt sex stuff uh, and no like super gory violence. Like my kid can't watch the boys. But what I learned is whether uh, they're like a late Gen Xer like myself or pretty much across the spectrum of millennials, you either grew up on shit like I did, like, for example, RoboCop 
I think I saw that movie when I was like eight or nine years old. That movie is horrific. It is absolutely terrifying. If you zoom past to like, I don't know, if people are in their late 20s, early 30s, they grew up on that like mid to late aughts internet, which if you recall, things like E-Bombs World and I don't know, there are a bunch, there are a bunch of worse ones like, uh, <laughs> you guys remember uh, Gore Gallery? <laughs> Did, am I the only person who ever watched that? <laughs> there was some gnarly stuff in there. Unchecked internet was wild back in the days, people. These days, they got all sorts of like censoring mechanics and safety uh, guidelines and, and safety features across YouTube. They got YouTube kids, et cetera, et cetera. And so it's like a lot more difficult for younger kids, or I should have put it this way. It's a lot easier on us parents to make sure that kids aren't watching shit that they should not be watching. When we were kids... Like, yeah, you could pop in, you know, we'd have, when I was a kid, you'd have like, you know, the, the, the porno channels, which were scrambled. So we wouldn't see, be able to see a lot there. But then later on, when the internet came around, boy, oh boy, that made things a lot easier. So I think the fact that so many parents from like my age and younger, spanning like 15 years younger, which are, is usually like sort of the age range of parents that I've, you know, uh, uh, talked to and become friends with. Generally speaking, we grew up on fucked up shit. So it's like we're not super hardcore about like, no, you can't watch anything that involves, you know, that people were cur cursing. It's just like, hey, dude, don't curse. OK, don't do that stuff. If you're in your room and you're cursed, I guess that's fine. But just don't do it at school and don't do it in front of me. Uh, but don't, you know, do as I say, not as I do. Um, and so that's kind of, I think the general parenting philosophy these days, like when my boomer parents were raising me, yeah, they let me watch all sorts of fucked up stuff. So I don't know. I kind of feel like the whole myth of like, oh, parents, you know, make it. I had a couple friends who were like, weren't allowed to watch the Simpsons when I was a kid. And it was like, God dang, those parents are fucked up. So in that, in any event. I feel like Netflix, when Raw moves to Netflix, I do think they should loosen up the guidelines. Will they? I could see that being the case. I think that they're going to have some, some savvier system for censoring the crowd. And in fact, recently, I've kind of noticed, I think it was on Raw last week, I noticed that they were trying to be a lot more selective. At one point, I think some like the crowd was chanting, holy shit. And I feel like they were being very, very selective with like, Oh, let's just do the shit. Let's, you know, try to get the actual word shit censored and not the entire thing. So not all the audio dropped out. So I kind of feel like they just need to stop censoring the crowd. Like if they're worried about families, there's hella families in attendance. They just have to deal with the fact that people are saying bad words uh, at the wrestlers. That's why I don't really take my kid to the wrestling shows anyways, because half the time I'm sitting next to a fan who's being out of pocket. Like, I don't know what it is about me and the tickets that I get, but every fucking time that I go to a wrestling show, I'm sat next to somebody or sat near somebody who's just being completely out of pocket. Wrestling fans can be kind of crazy sometimes, but not in a good way, not in a fun way. In any event, uh, yeah, I think that they should loosen things up. I gave them just now a list. Oh, here's one last thing. Also, uh, there are certain people I think they shouldn't censor because they curse really well. The Rock is one of them. CM Punk. Kevin Owens, I feel like, is a good, strong cursing guy. So I would say let him curse. Uh, over in the women's division, uh, I think it'd be fun to hear Naomi curse. I don't know why. She makes me laugh. Whenever she does like promos where she's talking shit to like Tiffany Stratton, it'd be fun to hear her curse a little bit. I don't know. Nia Jax also. I think Nia Jax, she's a great talker in the ring. She's a great character in the ring. Let her curse. And Jada Parker at NXT. I think it'd be, it'd be awesome to hear her curse as well. Here's another thing they could do. Maybe, just maybe, they have to adhere to certain like guidelines, the ones I just outlined, on the mic. But if there's not a mic around and it's just being caught by like the camera mic, which is like usually hovering uh, ringside or whatever, then you can say whatever the fuck you want to. Be like, hey, listen, you cock. Don't kick me. Oh, also, Joe Coffee in NXT should be allowed to say c Silver XKG16 says uh, Goldberg cost Gunther the gaudy belt at Crown Jewel. 
I feel like Kevin Owens is going to cost Cody Rhodes the gaudy title at Crown Jewel. I feel like Cody Rhodes can uh, afford a loss at Crown Jewel to Gunther. I don't think, I think it'd be bad for Gunther if he ate a loss right now. I think Cody could probably eat a loss, and I think it might actually help his cause a little bit. Uh, but let's get back to it. Goldberg costing Gunther the belt at Crown Jewel. I'm going to say it's a bad idea simply because that obviously would lead to a Goldberg versus Gunther match. Last time we saw Goldberg in a match had to have been, what, two years ago? Was the Bobby Lashley match the last Goldberg match? I don't know. I don't have Wikipedia in front of me, and I'm recording this, so you can't tell me live. I don't want to see that match, guys. I don't want to see it. I know Goldberg probably wants to do his retirement shit. I get that, but... I don't need to see that. I feel like the Lashley match was a good retirement match. We can just retcon that and call it a retirement match because the guy, he's just old. He was never particularly good. And I even Gunther, maybe Gunther would see it as like a challenge, like a good challenge. Like, oh man, let's see if I can drag this old guy to a good match. I don't want to see that shit though. I really, I, I have no desire to see that. Do you guys let me know in the comments below. How does Gunther win that match? What move does he use to win that match? Let's move on to this one here from Isaiah TV. It says Shane McMahon's 2016 return. So it's a mixed bag, this one. I'm ultimately going to say was a good idea. And this is why. Number one, bad idea him coming off Hell in a Cell, landing on uh, not Undertaker. Or wait, no, that was that the Kevin Owens one? I don't know. He did a bunch of shit around that time that he just shouldn't have done. I don't know what the deal was with the lockbox, but they should have explored that a bit more. Seems like that's actually come to fruition now. Um, I liked his heel run, though. I liked when he called Miz's dad a baked potato face. I liked when he called Braun Strowman stupid. Um, I didn't. I don't like the Shane McMahon stunts, and I don't particularly like his wrestling, but I liked him saying best in the world. But I didn't like him winning the best in the world tournament. So there's a. it's just a mixed bag. Of like good stuff and bad stuff. Ultimately, to be honest with you guys, he had a huge pop. He had a huge pop coming into, uh, coming back to the company. He probably could have been used better, but he wasn't without the entertainment value. So, unfortunately, I'm going to say it was a bad idea. He also had some cool general manager stuff. Shay Yermone says, uh, Ryback not winning the WWE Championship during Punk's reign. I feel like he had it in him to be WWE Champion. So ultimately, this turned out to be a good idea. Because Ryback didn't have a ton of longevity in WWE. Why exactly? I'm not sure. The guy was massively over. He was supremely over. I don't know exactly why. Maybe the story's out there. Maybe people have said... You know, the guy, he seemingly had an ego on him. CM Punk, no fan of Ryback, talked about how in CM Punk's estimation, he was not the safest worker he had ever worked with. So maybe that had something to do with it. In any event, people like when them big jack dudes go around just thrashing people. So I'm kind of surprised that they didn't run with Ryback as WWE champion of some sort. But ultimately, I kind of feel like he was a bit of a flash in the pan. So I'm going to say it was a good idea that they did not put the WWE Championship on him. Tyler Wensley says, uh, the brawl for all. Senseless injuries for all wrestlers involved. Good idea, bad idea. Well, clearly, senseless injuries, bad idea. Brawl for all, we can all agree is a bad idea, right? Here's the thing about that, though. I kind of enjoyed Brawl for All back in the day, mainly because when I was watching it live, mainly because it was like, oh, wait a second. This shit's real. Why are they doing that? And I at the time, because I was like fresh watching wrestling, I didn't know who Dr. Death Steve Williams was, except like they debuted him and almost immediately to my recollection, they tossed him in Brawl for All. And I was like, this guy's kind of a punk. <laughs> he, he, he ain't. He ain't good. Like, he just got his ass whooped by, I think, who is it? Uh, Bart Gunn? Did Bart Gunn take out Dr. Death? I forget who took out Dr. Death. But he got shoot injured, and that sucks. And that's horrible. They shouldn't have put him in that thing. They should have never done that thing because, like, why do we want to watch that? Like, it's just bad fighting, and it's just exposing everybody who's in it. And, like, theoretically, you should have been able to elevate the people who looked good in it. But, like... 
I don't know. In the end, nobody except for Bart Gunn really looked good in that thing. So I don't know. Bad idea, but like it had the train wreck appeal. Like I, I remember watching that, being like, "Okay, I'm down to see who who here is an actual badass." <laughs> It ain't Dr. Death. The Rob Observer says Baron Corbin and AEW. Good idea, bad idea, bad idea. No, keep him in WWE, but feature the guy. SmackDown's about to go three hours uh, coming up at the beginning of the year. So hopefully, hopefully, Baron Corbin will have many, many more opportunities to finally, to finally get that creative right with Baron Corbin. But if he goes to AEW, he'll be like, this dude is not a Tony Khan guy. You know this, Rob. He is not a Tony Khan guy, so that's a bad idea. Killian Sawyer says, advertising on the barricades during pay-per-views. Sure, good idea. Yeah, I don't give a shit. I like that shit. I'm, I'm an aesthetics guy. I'm a overstimulation, visual stimulation guy. You put pancakes on there. You put Wendy's on there. You put, uh, you know, uh, Bardal uh, motor oil on there. Sure. Do it all. It looks cool. It's like different. It's weird. Get that prime bottle out of there, though. Trash. Heel Harrison. Oh, boy. We're, we're coming down to the finish here, everybody. Heel Harrison says, Trump being on Undertaker's podcast. I'm not going to comment on that one here on the show because I just know I'm going to get like comments saying, well, I wish you wouldn't talk about politics, which is basically just people saying, I wish you had a different political opinion more like mine. Uh, and, uh, and that's okay. It's all good. I know it's a heated time of the year. Uh, heated time uh, of their political season. So I get it. I do have a Twitter account where I made my views pretty clear about that. So I'm going to, you guys can go check that out. It's at MF Steve here on the Twitter. I'm probably not going to be on the Twitter for very much longer, to be honest with you guys. I started, a, I got a Blue Sky account now. It's wrestlejuice.bsky.social, I think is what it is. So you guys can follow me there if you want. Or I'm also on the Reddit juice. I post there from time to time. I got to do a new reaction video soon. But yeah, I'm not going to talk about the politics thing here because people generally don't like that. I'm from California. <laughs> Gas Jones here with the last one says, buying a t-shirt one size bigger than it needs to be. Good idea or bad idea? Man, I'm in that weird in-between phase. Like I've been losing a little bit of weight lately. And so I was like out of comfort. And like, like these days, like shirts are all over the map. Shirt sizes are so all over the map. And I found, I was like, Hey, you know, baggier kind of looks a little bit cooler these days. So I was getting the two XL, but now I find myself going back down to the XL. I think it's because I lost a little bit of weight. So, uh, you know, I guess, I, I, I guess one size bigger than it needs to be. I think that's sort of the style now, wouldn't it? I don't know. I'm fucking 46 years old. What do I know about that? I just buy what I buy. So, I don't know. Good idea. If you like it, wear it. That's a good idea. Anyways, hey, hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button, man, because I always post up the good idea uh, threads. Just fucking at random because seemingly there's no schedule for this damn channel of mine yet. Uh, and so be sure to hit that subscribe button, the notify bell, so you guys always know when I'm putting up a thread for questions, good idea, bad idea, or hot takes. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys around.